welcome to it. It's the DNA Podcast. It's myself, Angela Nguba, alongside the legendary former captain of Columbus Crew in the MLS, <laughs> the only South African player to ever play in South American League out in Argentina, DK15! Doggy? Eta? Ukraine? I'm not doing that. We're going to review the AFCON, but very shortly. Okay. We're just wrap it up. Yeah. Congratulate the boys on what they've done. Of course. But then we need to look forward. Yeah. We need to look forward because we've got two friendlies coming up in March. Okay. Bafana Bafana. Mm-hmm. We've got two qualifiers this year for the World Cup in 2026 in the USA, Mexico, and Canada. Okay. Right? Yeah. So, and you've got AFCON next year in June in Morocco. Yeah. So those are the things that we need to now look forward to to say, Hugo Bruce, what does he do differently? How does he now base his picking of players how does he then move moving forward? But firstly, mm. let's relook at the AFCON. Uh, I think the AFCON is gone and dusted. Um, the boys have done very well. Uh, I don't want to dwell much in, in the tactical phase and I don't want to talk much about that. But uh, I just want to give the boys credit and uh, especially Rowan because... We play as a team, but an individual makes a difference. Mm. So Rowan made a difference. But I must congratulate the boys. They they actually came to the party where this was expected. And you ask yourself, hey, Nigeria's got 25 players based in Europe. Where, what, Top what? leagues. Top leagues. Yeah. Hey, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, their players are playing in Spain and all that. But we had a, basically... 90% of the players that are based here in, in South Africa at home playing in the PSL. Probably 98 even. Is it? 98? I mean, if you think about it, it's only so three it's players. So it's three players. Who, who Pesi, who Pesi. who's out in Egypt. Uh, Mayambela. You've got two Mithali. Yes. And then you've got Pepel. So it's only three. Those are the only three. Oof, wow. Hmm. The rest are South African based players. So that, that it's exactly what I said. Your Kumbula Mangiti, I could see... 90, 96 in these boys. Yeah. A lot of people thought probably I was talking crap and all that. But the angle, to be precise, the angle was to motivate the players in every coast. Mm. Because I knew oh, they want to watch this podcast. But I wouldn't have liked to say, guys, make us proud like everybody. It's, uh, so mm. many people will, will say that. Mm. But I, I needed an angle in order for me to send a message to the, uh, to, the, uh, to, the, the, the to the team that is in Ivory Coast. But it is true that certain players, they resemble the 1996 core. And when we were telling Mioguti, it's only three that, were, that are based outside. Wow. In 96, probably it was only four or five. Really? And then that's after, after, yeah. Did all the movement happen after? After that. The movement, most of the movements happened after 96. And uh, going back to Ivory Coast, a very, very, very tricky tournament based on uh, footballing problems, the heat, number one. Number two, I'm not too sure whether the, 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 the hotels and food were like up to standard. No, they were good. They were good. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they've got good infrastructure, infrastructure, good hotels. Okay. The you. heat is a lot. The heat, it, it yeah, was a yeah, lot. Yeah, <laughs> so you can imagine, nigga, Oguti, why would see the boys always like the shirts are wet within five minutes. But above, above all, I need to credit our own South Africans. They, they came out. They gave the boys... A, a a good 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 support like they did in rugby, and you know, I would hear some people saying, and especially ladies, but hey, I will get a fan of a fan. You do why? But you say I'm mean. But my team, but my but. Uh, it, it, it was so it was so nice to see the entire current country rallying behind the boys. And Twenty-one million people, people yeah. watched on SABC alone. Twenty-one million people watched <sighs> the Afcon. 
At the beginning of the tournament, yeah, almost two million people watched the first game, Bafana yeah, game, the Mali right? game, yeah, yeah, because yeah, I think people weren't convinced yet. Yes, yes. By I... the time we played Nigeria, five million people tuned in to watch Nigeria play South Africa. Wow, that's unheard of numbers. Of course, yes. Five million people tuned wow. in to watch South Africa play uh, Nigeria. Uh, exactly. This is why English. So everybody is saying, people grew in confidence. Yes, of yeah. course, because we are called Tamabahambala. I want to be banging yeah. in the national team, and the boys went out there not to prove a point, but to rubber stamp the the situation. You know, know, we are proud of the flag. We're proud of being the players that are representing you guys. And they went out there, and they did exactly what we were expecting out of them. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> now the question here, boy, I get my duty. Now Afkoni Hambil. You are talking about the friendly game in March. Is it end of March? Oh, that double check for you. Actually. So if it's end of, towards end of March, I think it's one is beginning, one is end. End, yeah. So if the games are in March, the question is: Would the Hugo and his technical team opt to uh, look at other players that they might probably need for the upcoming World Cup or Afcon that is coming next season in Morocco? Like we play Andorra, Andorra on yeah. the 21st. Yes. And we play Algeria away on the 26th. So those are friendly games. Those are the friendly games. And the next games, of course, is going to be in June. Yeah. The qualifiers, Nigeria and Zimbabwe, Oof. 3rd and 10th of June. Oof. Those are the four that big is, games this year. Oh, that is that is so tight. That is so tight. I don't think uh, they have... But the question is here, space, yeah. Let's start now in March. In March, yeah. Hugo's got the team that just came back from the African Cup of course, Nations. Yeah, yes. They've done very well. Of course. But they're not a young team. No. Yes, you've got young blood in them. Yes. You know, you've got an Apollos, you've got a Masego, um, you've got a Jaden, who, who who are young players. Yeah. But then you still have a Tulu, you still have a, the core of the team. Of course. You know, you have a Zwane, you have a Percy Dow, mm -hmm. who aren't young players. Yeah. Do you then... In the next two friendlies, carry on with that team to fine tune it for the World Cup qualifiers, or do we see you here now, perhaps start to blood in and yeah. put in, you know, the Mayos, the Mufu games that people are talking about? Are these two games games for him to play around or to fine tune? I think one of the games needs to be. He must be able to blood in one or two within the squad, but he cannot afford to dismantle it. The way we did in '96, we dismantled almost 80 percent in the '96 Moving squad. Moving from '96 to '98, we yeah. dismantled almost 80 percent, mm. and that's when now we realized with Ayman since a mistake, but that mistake cost us 28 years in order for us to be fed in Africa. Because if you look at from '96, '98, we played. Uh, it's the Benny years. Yes, so we, we came second. Then. Yeah, we played um, with eighty percent of 98, uh, 96 players not available, and also remember ninety eight we had f one coach coach in the Afcon, then three months later we had one coach who coached for E World Cup, mm. and then the second coach dismantled the ninety eight Afcon finalist team. And then Wabuisa, some of the 96 players into the 98 World Cup squad. Now, this is when I came back, but I was not part of the 98. Yeah, you're part of the 96 squad. 96 squad. A lot of you guys missed out on 98. Uh, of course. Came back for the World for Cup. For the World 19. Cup, yes. I think Helman Mkelele was part of that team. Yes. Mark Fish was still part of the team in 98. Definitely. You know, there was players here Play, and there, there that were part uh, of 96, 90, yeah. but dismantled. Dismantled. And then 98, you try to rebuild at the World Cup, rebuild no. the 96 AFCON team again. No, didn't work. Uh, hence, we we bow out in the group stages. Then after that, it was disaster after disaster. So then... So your... this, what are you talking about? Yeah. We need to be able to read, I mean, to look at what made us to not have results for the past 28 years. So it was costly, and we cannot afford to do that. Those states are too close. Remember that players are going back to their clubs, and also the coach doesn't have ample time to work with the new youngsters. He will only rely on form that is 
club form. Uguti, oh, this player is playing well for his club. Let me try and see if he can be able to replace a Pesi or Mshishi. You know, like you pointed out, uh, Kulu, all that. Then again, you ask yourself, Uguti, now you have July. Uh, a June, world, qualifiers. Sorry, uh, in June, yeah. the qualifier. And you don't have ample time to prepare for that game. Are you going to, to continue with the team that went to Ivory Coast in order for you to play the qualifiers and qualify? So it's a very tricky one. Hmm. Let's perhaps look at up front. Uh, yeah. The we went team. to up front with two strikers. <clears throat> okay. One played 90%. Yes. You know, Lepasa was used very sparringly. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, evidence was our leading striker. Mm. And that's because we didn't have a Lyle Foster. Okay. We didn't have a Lebo Mutiba. We didn't have a Shungwane as well. Yeah. Um, we didn't have also playing in the MLS, a uh, Lula. Yeah. Those were the strikers that the coach had been using on and off. Yeah. What do we do up front? Eesh. And those, <coughs> are the, 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 those are the big names. Um, obviously, the, you're telling me, which we went to... I have a recourse with two two outright strikers. And that's not supposed to be the, the, the situation because if you go into a tournament, the striking force also needs to have plus four, maybe players. If we had two, it was a little bit risky, but he managed to to, to overcome it. You that know, for, us, we, we didn't we score didn't, a lot of goals. We didn't, we didn't score a lot of goals at all. And uh Emutibi he was injured. Uh, do we have a report in terms of monitoring his injury? Mm. Do we have a report for Foster? Because Who's, remember, Foster was mental uh, issues, yes, issues, challenges, challenges. Now he's injured. Now he's injured. Now he's going. Is he going for an operation? Well, I mean, they're very mum about the about injury, it, yes. but he's injured. He's out. So Gushuguti, and then what was the reason why Klongwane was not part of the team? And uh, okay, and, uh, and, and you're the perfect person to talk to okay. about this, right? Okay, because you've got um, three players. Yeah, and South Africa's got over fifteen players that play uh, in, uh, the MLS, in the MLS. Yes, right. But three players in particular that have been part of Hugo Bruce's squad would be. Uh, a Shongwane would be a Blom mm -hmm. and would be a Mailul. Okay. Mailula hasn't played much. Played three games the entire season. Wow. So already, I'm not sure if he's getting picked. Okay. These two, who were part of Hugo Bruce's plans, who were part of that 50 list, right? That initial squad. Hadn't played and by the time we started, by the time it's kicker off uh, Cote d'Ivoire, yeah. they would have been at home for almost two and a half months. <sighs> Bangazali, because the MLS calendar yeah, I know ends it's early. Early, yeah. And this is something you know because yeah, it's always been like that. Yes, yeah. So then how does the coach pick players that have been sitting at home for two months? It's 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 impossible. You can't have players that have already they've detrained. Uh so it's like when you say you detrain, you 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 reach a plateau and if you're not training, then you drop. So in a coach's language, you call it detraining. In my situation, and I, 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 I concur with you exactly. In my situation, three months, PAE Luntu's MLS does not have games. Mm. So what I used to do then, Chiefs had to loan me for three months. So they have to choose between to pay the salary or the insurance. Okay. Okay. So it's either you, you pay my salary for the three months or the insurance. For the three months. Yeah. For the next three months, good to win. This play, if anything happens here, boom. Yeah. yeah. So I, I've done that twice. Uh, in 96 While you and were crew. Columbus, yeah, 96 and 97. So for the three months, I used to play for Kaiser Chiefs. Mm -hmm. And then two weeks prior, the preseason in Ohio, I would have got like two and a half weeks before I could start precision training with uh, Columbus but also knowing that our, I've been playing they were monitoring each and every game the training sessions so they would ask if the coach could provide the report the medical team could provide <coughs> a, a, a report um, if also the, phys the physical trainer if he can provide 
the, the, the report in terms of the loading that uh, he, he uh, so to see where you to are see where I'm, uh, yes physically so this was kind of like an agreement and there was communication between chiefs and Columbus crew but it wasn't Columbus crew per se because Tina we were owned by the league mm. so the league gives teams that are very low uh, at the lower bottom or that don't have star players then they give it to you, this kind of players. Like Valderrama, you know, he was also uh, like loaned like that. Mm. Sean Bartlett, same thing. So I think it might help. The issue with that, Doggy, is at that yeah. time, the rules were a little bit different. Yeah. Because there weren't dates, transfer dates. Oh, yes, when yes. You can you come, can in. come in. And, oh, you know, yeah. But now they finished their season in November. In November, yeah. Mm. The window's only open. Yeah, no, it's in January. In January. Yeah. And it's not like I you're understand. free. I understand. They're not releasing you on a free. Yeah. They're yeah. saying it's a loan. Yeah. I just thought of that now. Actually, no, yes, yes, yes. As yes. you're saying that. No, yeah. To say that will be the issue. Yeah. They can train with Chiefs. Blom can go to Chiefs and say, hey, a former player, they can train. They, you can train. Uh, yeah. I think Klawane is the one that I heard of was training with Supersport. Yeah. He was training um, with Supersport. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But he can only train. Yeah. It's a player that is training only. Not playing games, yeah. good enough to join a Bafana Bafana to go to no. a championship, to uh, go to yeah. an Africa Cup of Nations. Remember, you can train, but the game is the teacher. So you train in order for you to become the best when you play the game. So if you train and you don't play, you won't realize how best you are or what kind of improvement you need. So I understand where the coach is coming from. And this is needs. Brains. It needs uh, people to sit down with Hugo and the players, and we cannot afford to lose these players. They 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 mean a lot to us because they are still young. Um, if there's any movement from MLS, then it's a plus for us, you know. Because I've heard also that Shlomwane might move from the US mm. to Europe. And you can imagine what this tournament would have done for Shlomwane. I know it would. I I strongly believe he would have. Shined very, very. He would have, he would have uh, made a great out of himself. But hey, it's a problem, man. Wow. So Emutibi is injured. He's injured. So Foster, it's is injury now. No longer mental factor. But what do we do with Foster, doggy? Does <clears throat> does Hugo and Safa do they go and speak to Foster about Lalela? What do we do with Foster's <laughs> situation? I think. Uh, not to say something, but um, you don't play for your country, you get suspended by the mother body. Which, when they, your country wanted you or when they've selected you, you don't pitch. So if Safa reports the matter to FIFA, he can be suspended. So we don't want that. Let's let's actually solve this problem amicably. Let's go talk to the boy. Not with some I just probably to to bring him back because it looks as if we you know, listen, this is your country, and the reason why you're playing here is because your country gave you the opportunity to be who you are today. So you can't turn your back to South Africa. It used to happen before, whereby we wanted a fish, a mass, a mass singer, shoes. But life will make sure that uh, there's someone who goes and and uh, and uh, go talk to the people there uh, in Europe. Let me give you a scenario. There was a problem with Lucas. He had a niggling injury problem. And Dr. Ramatisele flew from South Africa. He went to Leeds. He stayed almost a week or two. And Lucas was available for life for, for the AFCON 96. But now... If we are going to be using technology to communicate, then it's going to be a problem because we don't have a face-to-face -face kind of a situation. So I would like to believe that Safa has to get people that can go around Europe, help the coach, because he doesn't know how many players we have that are playing overseas. Because even if we can say, but he can look at what we have with PSL. Even PSL, they don't want to talk to him. 
<laughs> you know? So I think if if we we, we we can come to the party as a country to to help the situation eliminate the the unnecessary negative situation. Uh, let's let's try and help the coach and his background staff, and let's see if we can qualify for for the World Cup. Because mind you, you came third. The squad say Rezipa, mind you, and people now are starting to believe in Bafana Bafana, and it's exactly what we needed. We can't go back. Gule gule black cloud we had twenty eight years ago. We can't afford to do that. When, because the World Cup is the, the big goal. Yeah. We want to get back to the World Cup, and that's in 2026. Okay. From where we're sitting now, that's two years away. Yeah. We've got to get ready for that. We've got the qualifiers. We've got a couple of friendlies, but we've also got an entire Africa Cup of Nations in Morocco. Yeah. Doggy, yes, you can't just overhaul the team. No, you can't. So when is the right time to do that blooding in? Because I'm not sure what a Zwane looks like in two years. Yeah. I mean, already we're saying use Zwane sparringly. Yes. I'd love to see Mshishi play World okay. Cup. So, but I'm not sure what that looks like. Okay. I'm not sure what a Ulu looks like and, and all the, the, the senior players. When is the blooding in? Because there's no game for cheese here. Mm. All these games are important games. Yeah, yeah. And you need to get the team ready for the qualifiers. You need to get the team ready for AFCON next yeah, year. yeah. So I can't say, hey, there's a building phase here. Mm -mm. What does Hugo do? It's a tricky one uh, because if you are going to be asking that, how will he be able to manage to maneuver? Will it be possible if they sit around the table and look at the possibilities in terms of getting if there is a FIFA calendar or if they can be, probably organize certain games in order for him mm -hmm. to be able to to select different players from different teams. Because if, if I remember very well, we played what we call a Four Nations tournament. Mm -hmm. A Four Nations tournament uh, that included uh, South Africa, Ghana, Australia, Egypt. So the first, the first, the first Africa uh, four nations tournament that we played under Clive. And I thought that tournament was so important because there are certain players that uh, emerge out of that. And Clive saw the need to, to, to rob them in, in the, in the 96 squad. So looking at the domestic program versus the SAFA program, that might be probably a problem, but I, I cannot say if, will it be possible to have that, those kind of games for, for the coach to be able to, to blood in new, new youngsters that he will probably need for, for the AFCON, for the, uh, for the next World Cup. So, it is a, 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 a serious issue that needs to be resolved by SAF and PSL probably, or any stakeholders that are involved, even if it's internal or external stakeholders. So what matters most is how do we then shape up our, uh, our national team in order for it to be a force to be reckoned with in Africa? How do we do it indeed? I mean, the squad <laughs> we have now, not yeah. very old, I mean, you know, if you really put into into to the two years, mm. most of them, depending on form, can go all the way to the World Cup. Yeah. You know, can go all the way to the World Cup. Um, it's, it's not far-fetched that it's possible. Yeah. You know, Matrapa, who's sitting, I think, is 30 years old. Um, she, she, um, Percy's going to be 30. So it is possible. It is. Would you say, keep the core of this team as it is, Maybe tweak it here and there. Mm -hmm. Two, three players at most. Mm -hmm. And let's push with this team. I would like to believe that can work. Uh, let's not temper that much with the team that did well in, in Ivory Coast. Um, 
I don't think that if you say it's 33, 30, 30, 31, it can be a problem for the next two, three years. Mm. Those those players can can always carry us. Um, but it's short sighted, it? Because yeah, now, yeah, after no, 26. After 26, then that's it. So we can say um, a program needs to be developed in order for that problem should talk to to the senior national team, whereby we get a feed from that program. But then the question is, why do we have the under 23s and the under 17s and the under 20s? Why do we have those uh, uh, under 20s, 17 and 19, I mean 23s? Because the program that I'm talking about is the one that needs to be the feeder to the senior national team. Mm. So all these problems and the situation that we encounter now will be resolved because if we look at our under 23 and there's something that they can give to the national team, even if under 20 for that matter, we don't have to look at under 23, even under 20, if the boy is good, why not give him a chance? So the program that I'm talking about is exactly the under 17, the under 20s, and the under 23. That needs to be the feeder to the Bafana Bafana, but it doesn't look like that's the case. So we only depend on players who are playing for their clubs. So that needs to be resolved by the technical director, Mr. Steinbock. I'm going to be a little bit controversial here. Yeah. I, you watch Sundowns, you're doing the Sundowns uh, Pirates game. Yeah. Sundowns formed a core of the team that we had. Yes, definitely. In Cote d'Ivoire. The experience in the AFL and the Champions League um, and just continental football helped yeah. us a lot. Yes. I looked at Sundowns and I saw, uh, I think, five non-South Africans, South Americans in particular, yeah. in that team. Yes. Do you worry then about what that's going to do to help <laughs> Bafana Bafana or hurt Bafana Bafana? Because the one school of thinking is those players are going to sharpen our players. Yeah. You know, Definitely. they're going to be even better when they're of playing course. with some of the best players in the world. And those guys seem to be really, really good. Or the other side is then you've got young South Africans that are sitting just watching who don't get to play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that, 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 that's a tricky one because you're mentioning something that I uh, never thought about, but uh, it's out there. Yes, against Paris, there were five South Americans and the rest were like from South Africa. That can be a crisis because uh, if we look at years back, the top goal scorer was coming from uh, outside South Africa. You know, uh, and it was like posing a serious question. But then are we only dependent on sundowns to to get players for the national team. The question is, I mean, the answer is that, yes, of course, because that's the only team that uh, seem to be challenging uh, Africa. And uh, we do have other teams that are participating when it comes to Africa tournaments, but are we getting anything out of those, uh, those teams? No. So, it is it is a serious problem because we we seem not to be getting players that have experience playing outside South Africa in terms of uh, Champions League and Confederations Cup. So we don't have any 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 teams that are actually participating. And when I'm saying participating, going all the way up until semi or in if not finals. At some stage, I saw Kaiser Chiefs playing in the finals uh, against Ali. And, you know, that was good to see. And this is when we we, we saw um, a bit of some of the individuals that were playing in that game. And we saw Super Sports participating in an African tournament, uh, Marumo Kalak. And that was it. If I'm missing any team, then... I would like to believe that also participating in Africa club level 
can help the national team. So it is a it is going to be a problem seriously. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's going to be a problem. I'm telling you, um, it's going but, to. But be, it's going essentially, to be a what you're saying is, we're grateful to Sundowns, but the burden should not necessarily no, lie no, just no, on Sundowns. No, not at all. You know, I I happened to watch a game between Arrows and uh, TS Galaxy, and I saw. I saw some players that are very, very promising. Mm-hmm. Mujele. Uh, I thought Vidal was probably South African, but he's not. He's a, he's a Brazilian. What a player. And there are some couple of players, Quilontos, um, Kutes Galaxy, that I would like to believe that they're promising. But is age a factor or it's, it's not a problem? Mujela is only what twenty seven. He's only twenty seven. So from where I'm seated, I thought the player deserve also to be looked at, not selected. To be looked at. Jesus, and don't let's think of his position. Position zip. Mujela's position. Mujela, Mujela, Mujela can be is a two in one. You can play him as a winger. You can him play him as a dummy striker. It happened several times. Uh, you look at the final they played against Stellenbosch. But then I'll um, bring in Emufu King, I'll bring in Ekanyi Somayo. Yes. You know, those youngsters. And Apollis. Yeah. Yes, of course. And then I look at them versus a 27 year old mm-hmm. who was playing his first season yeah. of professional football. Okay. I need to a form. And mm. when this boy started playing for Galaxy um, or being robbed in Galaxy, no one was like raving about him. True. And today here I am, I'm like, wow, what a talent. Yeah. And that's exactly what we need. Let's not focus more on big name, I mean, big teams. Let's also look at other teams. What do they have? Mm. So the scouting needs to be out there in order for us to resolve this problem. So players that are identified, they need to have their own program. You know, now when we talk like this, let me take you back. When I was playing in Argentina, I just wanted, there were, there were times where there were no games uh, in Argentina. And I thought, no, let me just have a look. What, what, what is football here? Because mm-hmm. fans are very crazy about it. And then when I asked, uh, the guys from my team, fellow Carlo Oste, is it possible for me to visit uh, their association, which is the Argentina Association, Football Association? And uh, we went. When I arrived there, there was a gentleman by the name of Jorge. And uh, I sat him down and asked questions. How do you guys identify players for national teams? Mm. They say no we have satellite coaches around the country. So if a player is good, who is based in Clackstop, they bring the player and the coach. When they assemble players that have been identified, so they bring both. While the player is being developed, the coach also is being developed with the same program because they don't want to lose the player and the coach. So what they do, the program talks to how the national teams, not senior, national teams play. Yeah. That coach needs to have the skill and continue coaching that player the way the national team would want him to utilize, to be utilized. So it's a program that they are utilizing. So they don't just sit every now and then Every two months, there must be a report. Oh, wow. There is a player like Maradona, left footer. He can do this. You know, Alvarez. The list is endless. So they identify players that are similar, like the ones that they have currently within the national team. So I'm not too sure if it's that something that we can look at, 
because it, it, it doesn't seem like we, we have a program that talks to development in terms of the feeder to the national team. Yeah, I mean, if it is there, then I would like to see it. Or yeah. if probably you know any or, or you know any of the programs that are Name out there. Name 10 players from the under 23 squad. Yeah? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't play enough games. Yeah. And this is not, I mean, he's trying. Yeah. Walter Steenborg has really got into Safa and he's really trying. And, no, he is. Not you know, you can yeah. see there's, there's, there's a lot of movement. Yeah. But I, we should know who are under 23s are. Yeah, no, definitely we, we should. And not in uh, Olympic years only. Yeah. But do you know that, <clears throat> excuse me, when we play in the Olympics, ne? we participate in the Olympics. Most of their players come from DDC. Am I correct? Yeah. Now they're going to face players that play for Real Madrid. Professional leagues. Professional yeah. leagues. And that's under 23, young it. So Premier Leagues. Premier oh, Leagues, yeah. yes. So, I mean, you're talking about players that are having a five-year contract with Boca Juniors, having a five-year contract uh, with Real Madrid. Oh, come on. <laughs> so there's so much that we can talk about. And this, I think this, we, we, we're saying these things because we, we have experienced them, we have seen them but we don't see anything happening in South Africa. And we're not trembling in anyone's toes, but we're just having a conversation. And uh, football is all about opinions. Uh, you, you, you can't just say, no, this man is talking crap. Football is about opinions. And this is how also you learn when you hear a certain individual expressing his own opinion. So unfortunately in South Africa, you say something, yes, it's back to Bella Bonk, ah, yeah, yeah, I see food, but without even understanding what was the mission behind the whole thing. So we really need a program that can talk to how do we fit the senior team? Because when last have you ever heard uh, a player has been roped in from the development structures? Are we going to be saying because we gave Hugo this Angitua uh, Kumbula when we were, we qualified for Olympics, Makopa was part of that team, Angit. Yep. And here he is today. He's doing very well in the senior uh, national team. So that is a program on its own. Oguti Olympics gave us a Makopa, and today. We're praising Makupa because he has done so well. So why don't we have something better than that that we can be proud of that we initiated as a country? And I would like to believe that probably the technical director Safa, this is what he's trying to do. You know, because I know he's busy with the, the education of coaches. Um we is doing very well there. But we'll just have to wait and see. Oh, what about Pele Lap? Shana, um, remember the squad uh, that went to um, the Olympics, the Olympics uh, when we went to Tokyo back then? Yeah. Uh, you might remember, I think Lau Foster was part of the team. Yes. I remember Dimilin Kune, Evidence Mahop. Of course, um, he went with Matoho as an. Uh, the two of them were the over 23s. Yes. Uh, as per allowed, per the rules there. Was um, Mkwena there? Ronan Williams was there. Okay. Um, who else did you have? Tebo Tebo Kwena was, was there. Tebo yes. Kwena was part of the team. Yes. Tabo Kwele, remember Tabo Kwele? Tabo Kwele, yes, Tabo Kwele, yes. Tabo Kwele yes, was part, part of, of the team. team. Of course, Ngepile uh, Yeah. was also part of the team. Goodman Musele. Oh, wow. Um, Lou the Singh. Lou the? Lou the Singh was part of the team. Yes. Uh, Kuamelo Kodisang. Oh, wow. Uh, obviously, Evidence Mahopa, mm -hmm. part of the team. Mabiliso. Monyane, mm. part of the team. Teshas Malepe, wow, part of the team. You look at this team now. You look at that under twenty three team that went to Tokyo. Yeah. Um, and you look at the players that are still as part of Bafana. You got Tebo yes. Ronwen Williams, Mahopa. Evidence Mahopa. Yes. 
I think that's it. That's it. I think yeah. those are the three players that were part players. of David Notwa and his under 23 team that went to the Olympics mm. that have now progressed to Bafana Bafana, Hugo Bruce's AFCON squad. Yeah, definitely. So out of that, we had a Williams that has improved, a Mokwena that has gave us unbelievable performance. A Mahupa that is now a better player and a better striker. And that on its own, it tells you that's a program that we're talking about, that we need programs that will be the feeder to, to the senior national team. Well, let's see how it all goes down. Now, uh, speaking of all things Bafana Bafana, 10 bit Bafana, that's the hashtag. Supporting Bafana Bafana, we support the right team here. We backing the boys with a 10 bit. Dr. Kumar and myself just having conversations about Bafana. What it is it? What is it that you'd like us to talk about as far as Bafana Bafana is concerned? What is it that you'd like to talk about as far as the national team is concerned? Throw your conversations out there, throw your leads out there, and Doc and I will have that conversation. At the moment, we're reflecting on all things Bafana Bafana from the AFCON, but looking forward to a very, very tricky next two years for Hugo Bruce. Hmm. I said the best thing South Africa can do uh. is keep Hugo Bruce up until the end of his contract, at least minimum. Definitely. Which is 2026. Yeah. But I wonder if we can hold on to him <laughs> because of the challenges that of he's course. frustrated with every day. Yeah. I think Hugo Bruce is the best thing that we can do for Bafana Bafana is to keep him. If I, will, if I were to listen to you and understand exactly what you're saying, Hugo should continue with the squad, whether lose, draw, win. Yeah. So then we need to be clear if that's the case. And if we're talking about the problems that we are facing at the moment, yeah. then we're going back to building phase or maintenance phase. I think we're at maintenance now. Maintenance phase. Yeah. So we're no longer building. No. We are maintaining. So we cannot disrupt the maintenance phase. Exactly. So if that's the case, then let's keep Bruce up until his contract is paid. Minimum, yeah. Yeah, minimum. Because I know if anything happens that we lose, this country, I, I is one they lose. But do he? I is one they lose. I, I, but that's that's how they are, South Africans. We are one of the ones who are going to be able to do it. This is what South Africa is all about. Because my thing is, you can't be a... a, a a bad coach overnight. No, you can't be. Hugo stats right now. Yeah. Tell us that he's a good coach. Yeah. Not only prior to AFCON, mm -hmm. but at the Africa Cup of Nations as well. Yes. So if coming into the next couple of friendlies that we're going to be playing, there's a loss here and there for somebody who's already thinking AFCON, is already thinking World Cup. Yeah. If he loses a game here and there, he's not a bad coach overnight, surely. No, no, definitely he's not. I mean, to think he's going to win every game moving forward is setting him up for, 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 for failure. Yeah, uh, I think what you're saying is true. Melissim keep that up until his last contract, he expire. And um, from now and then, we need to now plan and have a program because without planning, will always get back to this kind of a problem or situation. So if he's there for the next couple of years, we need to have programs that will talk to what we're facing at the moment as a country. No, we have to. We have to. We, look, in football, there's no short corners. I mean, shortcuts. You can't. It's impossible. The minute you start doing things Isolating, as, as, as isolated, or maybe in isolation. On the field, we'll see. With something's not right here. You can't, you can't cheat soccer. You can't cheat football, Elon Never. There's no way. So if we, if we have a plan, then our results will be the ones that we see on the field. There are so many examples that I can give it to you. There are so many. 
if we were to look at Senegal, eight years he says has been struggling with that team. They stuck with him. And then what happened in Cameroon? He won it. Mm. You know, because it was a program to say Salanale out as AI now. Because when Bruce has to leave, there must be a handover. I learned to look at you. Right, now I'm bringing my own technical staff. Yeah, from the physio, doctor. In, in, no, 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 no. We don't need that. We have to be a country not to, to pride ourselves of what we have achieved and to pride ourselves of who we are. And let's put some uh, stops away like any. Tom Dick and Eric comes in there, thinks can coach South Africa, thinks he can do whatever he pleases. No. Yeah. We have to stop that. I mean, I'm, I'm glad that uh, uh, the technical director has, has came, come out with uh, a certain way in order for you to coach in South Africa. Or to minimum be the, minimum qualifiers. Yeah, yes. Uh, or to be the coach here, Bafana. What, what. That's the way to go. Because answering some of your questions, Noloazi uh, Nicole Tusi wants to know from Doctor, who was your best South African player at AFCON? I'm gonna tweak it here, Noloazi. And say pick two because the one picks himself and it's Ronald Williams. <laughs> so that one we put aside. Yeah. <laughs> Who else? <sighs> Who else? That was the best player for Afcon. It's uh, Modau. Ooh, Kulisho. Kulisho Modau. Why? Very clean. Very intelligent. Individual brilliancy, and it gives a team a shape. Um, what I saw at Sundowns, I thought probably it would be left there, and only to find that the boy is very, very intelligent, and that's just how he plays, and hence that's why I say, for me, he was one of the best. But I'm answering the question. Mudao was the best player for me. Honorable mention, Tebo Homukwena? Well, Tebs are there and there. Yeah. Uh, some pitches he, you wouldn't find him on the field, you know. So I might as well, if I were to say Tebo, then talk about Sitole. Okay. But Mudao was constantly a thorn. For most of the teams, he was on the right hand side. When he got injured, I got uh, I got worried about it. And look, the boy recovered within forty eight hours, and he gave us the same 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 performance. So he never changed. Kolile wants to know from <laughs> Doctor. The question is: Which player who wasn't part of this team do you think should get roped in to perhaps assist make this even better? Who would you have in mind? Give me. Three players that you think would do well in this AFCON, or rather in this AFCON squad that Hugo Bruce had picked? Uh, obviously, it's a player that's ready. Uh, it's a player that would go in there and perform. So I would have loved to see Bradley Mujaila, but uh, he's only picking now. The player that I would have loved to see, it would have been Bongos Shongwen. Okay. Yeah. Um, very, very brave young player, very direct, and also is creative. We have seen him when he played for the national team. I thought they missed him there. I'm going to throw some names your way. Okay. Ikram Reynas? Well, Ikram Reynas, for AFCON, I think it would be too harsh for him. Because he's used to domestic and he's doing very well. The kind of players that we have in the national team wouldn't have suited him. Because for Stellenbosch, they play according to his strength. 
But the national team crop, they don't play direct football. They combine tiki taka and all that. Would have wasted the talent. Can you smile? Yes, that's another bridge that I uh, I would have loved to to see because he's been scoring goals. He's got flair. He would have shared very well with the rest of the team. He's still young. Uh, he would have grown from 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 the to- uh, from the time I mean, from the tournament. And the only problem is that uh, he didn't spend more time with Bruce and some of the players that are that were currently playing in uh, Afcon. So the reason why I chose Bongi is because he has played seventy percent of the games, and he would have made made a difference when he was given an opportunity to go in and play. Young Mufu King at Orlando Pirates. Young Mufu King at Orlando Pirates, it would be proper if he would go through under 23s and have a feel as much as this is what he's doing at Pirates. He played for DDC also and then for the senior team. So he has to go through that. We should be wary and be careful not to expose this talent and uh, probably destroy their, 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 their beliefs and the courage they have. Um, it's better if he's dropped in and he's a strong character. He's got a strong character. It's one player that uh, will be giving us something, will get something out of him. But uh, just to throw him in there, uh, it, would have, it would have been a, a disaster. Really? Mufukeng, it would have been a disaster. So you don't think Relebo Hile Mufukeng at 19, who's doing ever so well in the DSCB Premiership, is mm. ready for okay, let's, if tournament we, yeah. football at Bafana Lago? Like the age is correct. He's playing for Pirates. But the question is, if you think he will be best for the senior national team, yeah. why is he not playing 90 minutes at Pirates? So they're also trying to introduce him slowly but surely and they don't want to throw him in the, into the deep end because Pirates is one of the strongest team in Africa and that boy needs to gel with everything that is happening and they need to control and direct how they, pro, they, they, they produce, I mean, throw him into the deep end. Last one. Yeah. Do you think there's a potential to revive Tebi Gossi Lodge, his international career? He's playing with <laughs> yeah. a team filled with internationals. Yeah. He's now going to be playing a lot more African football on, yeah. the, on the continent. Mm-hmm. Do you see a way back to him? The unfortunate part, whether we like it or not, that's a God-given talent. No one can take it away from him. Angifaganga, the parents didn't instill it or any coach. It's a God-given talent. So if he... Unayo, and he's, he's showing us that he's ready to be back into the national team. Why not? He's South African. The movement, it's not about we should be now having problems with him because he moved from Paris to... That is it's between the two teams. How did he move? And it's, it's all about Paris. But if at Sundowns, his performance, why not dropping me? I mean... I don't know if you watch the game with the the one six one. Look at the individual brilliance. There's a cross. I I I, I the third goal, Gasserino. That ball can only be played by someone who's intelligent, by mm. someone who understands what. When the defenders are facing their keeper, and the player that is targeting, he's got a better scoring po- uh, opportunity. From the right wing, we Kelile. And Serino just tapped it in. It eliminated four defenders. And it was played between the keeper and the defenders. So there on its own, Yak Bonis would the panel you've got a player, not just a player, but an intellectual. Hmm. A player is Shagan Peel. So why not? If 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 this is what is going to deliver at sundowns, we might as well drop them in because. Do we have more depth when it comes to wing play in the national team? No.
We don't. Hey, we've got to get out of here. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's the DNI Podcast, proudly brought to you by Hashtag 10B.